Hello everyone, this is Jinx, one of the Monster Hunter Math Guys. So this video is a direct sequel to our previous video talking about the raw attack cap and how it works in Iceborne. Now you will need to understand how the raw attack cap works in order to understand the rest of this video, so if you don't already, I recommend checking out that video. However, the reason I am making this video is because it turns out in that last video I was wrong. In that video, I said that the highest damage you can hit on the training pool is 2515. But it turns out the highest damage number you can hit is actually 2993. Now the reason for this is because there are three things I was not previously aware of. However, this is quite a lot to discuss, so before we get into that, quick reminder. We do have a Twitter where we post updates about videos and things that interest us, and Tuna does stream live on Twitch almost every single day. Shooting us a follow on these two platforms is one of the best ways you can help support us completely for free. Alright, let's talk about the three things I was missing in the previous video. First off, it turns out Frostcraft is actually a post raw cap multiplier, meaning that it multiplies after you calculate for the raw cap. This puts it in the same vein as things like crit boost as well as sharpness. Now this actually changes the game a little bit because it means that the Rajang GS can actually hit slightly higher than the Acidic Glavinus can on the training pole. At least if we also have Thunder Attack 6 in the build as well as crit element, fortunately crit element comes along with Frostcraft. All in all, we end up being able to hit 14 more damage with a true charge slash on the Rajang GS versus the Acid Glavinus GS without accounting for sweet spots. But this is only going to be true if we can get Thunder Attack 6 with the Frostcraft set bonus and still hit the raw cap with Crit Boost 3. Now fitting in all of those skills along with 320 base true raw is not easy in the training area, however that's where discovery number 2 comes in. It turns out that all of these base true raw multipliers like non-elemental boost, feline heroics, evasion mantle and fortify as well as attack up extra large songs from hunting horns are multiplicative, not additive bonuses on each other. This means stacking them is a lot stronger than I previously thought because in the previous video I assumed they were additive bonuses. For example, this is a comparison we had in the previous video showing how easy it is to hit the raw cap. But these all assume that they were additive, so for example, Evasion Mantle gave you a 30% bonus, Attack Up Extra Large gave you a flat 20% bonus, and Non Elemental Boost gave you a flat 5% bonus. And then Fortify either gives you a 10% or a 20% bonus, depending on how many times you decide to card for it. But in reality, after further testing, it turns out that the 30%, the 20%, the 5%, and the 10 or 20% all multiply on top of each other. This means if you have an Evasion Mantle along with an Attack Up Extra Large Song from a Hunting Horn in your team, as well as Fortify and Non-Elemental Boost on appropriate weapons, when using standard raw attack buffs, you don't need any raw damage on your build to hit the raw cap. Now in terms of our trying to get the highest damage number possible in the training area, this means we can hit the raw cap on a Rajang GS augmented for attack twice with only Evasion Mantle, Feline Heroics, and two procs of Fortify. Just these three will push us over the raw cap without us ever having to use a Mega Demon Drug, any attack boost, peak performance, anything like that. This means it's very easy for us to fit 100% affinity with crit boost 3 with thunder attack 6 on the Rajang GS to make it hit a higher damage number than the acidic Lavinus can hit. But then comes the next problem, how can we proc fortify as well as feline heroics after on the last video I said that wasn't possible. Well that's where discovery number 3 comes in, turns out that the feline foodie daily skill still applies in the training area and continues to apply no matter how many times you cart. Now unfortunately this is a daily skill, meaning we have to keep resetting over and over until we find the feline foodie skill that also couples along with feline heroics. Now fortunately, as we discussed earlier, we don't need any bonus true raw, meaning we don't have to eat for attack up large, which does make it a bit easier to make sure we get feline foodie and feline heroics together at the same time. And now that we do have both of those together, that means we can cart as many times as we'd like to proc fortify and still keep feline heroics active. Then it is simply a matter of bombing ourselves down until we hit feline heroics health level. Alright, now that we have all of this down, let's briefly discuss Frostcraft. Frostcraft is kind of the core reason why this number can get higher than it did previously. 
Now, I've only done limited testing on the Frostcraft numbers, so forgive me if this is not a full explanation on everything related to Frostcraft, but it's only what's relevant for this particular testing. So the top level of Frostcraft gives you a 30% damage bonus to both your raw and elemental damage. This is really nice, however, for our particular testing, it is impossible to get this 30% damage bonus. The reason for this is that the damage increase we get from empowering our True Charge Slash by landing the first hit of our True Charge charge slash is stronger than the bonus we get from the max level of frostcraft and you use up that max level of frostcraft with the very first hit that lands on an opponent this means that it is impossible for us to empower our true charge slash and get this plus 30 percent damage bonus which means that we have to choose between either empowering our true charge slash and getting the second highest level of frostcraft or just not hitting that first strike and getting the max level of frostcraft. Well, that second to highest level of frostcraft gives us a 15% damage bonus instead. However, if we go with that 15% and the empowered slash, we do end up with a higher damage. This is because an unempowered true charge slash level 3 only has a motion value of 211 and 170 for elements. This is about a 25% increase in the raw damage alone, which that extra 15% from Frostcraft being at max level does not come close to making up. All in all, not empowering our true charge slash does cause us to lose 276 damage, which is a lot. So this is why we decide to empower our true charge slash instead of spacing it so the true charge slash lands with the full Frostcraft bonus but isn't empowered. Also, one thing I want to quickly mention about Frostcraft. Did a little bit of rounding reverse engineering and it turns out that the Frostcraft bonus applies to raw and elements separately before they round. Now this doesn't really matter unless you care about how rounding mechanics work because it's only going to be a 1-2 to two point difference in terms of damage to paper calculations. But for those of you who do care about that, it is important to know that all of the Frostcraft multipliers apply before the final rounding of elemental and raw damage. In this particular case, if we were to apply the 15% bonus after we round the elemental and raw damage on the Rajang GS, we end up with one damage short of what we're supposed to hit. Neato. It's also important to note that the raw damage is the only thing sweet spots apply to. So the damage on this hit is 2907 on the trending pool if we don't sweet spot. But all several weapons with a few exceptions have a sweet spot on the model that if you hit the hitbox with that part of your weapon, you get an extra 3% damage. However, this only applies to raw damage. If we apply this 3% to the elemental damage as well, no matter how we decide to round it or where we place it in the formula, we always end up with one more damage than we actually hit with a sweet spot. And this remains consistent with other testing I've seen from other testers. So yeah, the 3% damage bonus from Sweet Spots only applies to raw damage. So all of these things in mind, if we trigger Evasion Mantle and then go and hit the training pole with an Empowered True Charge Slash with Frostcraft, we can see when we pull up the status menu that our raw hits 3072, which if we divide by the bloat value of 4.8 for the greatsword is 640 true raw. This is the raw cap for this particular greatsword because with two attack augments, the Rajang GS hits 320 base true raw. Now with crit boost 3, white sharpness, a 264 motion value for TCS level 3 empowered, the 15% damage boost from Frostcraft, we should be hitting the pull for 2872.59 raw damage. This rounds up to 2873. Now for the true element at 31.6, a sharpness modifier at white of 1.15, a 1.5 crit element modifier for greatsword, 180 motion value for element for TCS empowered, and 15% Frostcraft, we should be hitting for 33.57 thunder damage on the pole. Rounded up, of course, to 34. Also, quick side note, yes, for whatever reason in Monster Hunter World, if you have a decimal true element, that's what's used for the actual calculations, not the amount of displays on screen. It then rounds after multiplying the true element in a decimal form with the crit modifier. But we'll go more in depth into that in the future when we talk about how rounding works in Monster Hunter. Anyway, if we take our 34 thunder damage with our 2873 raw damage, we get 2907 total damage. Let's see how close we got. So our final damage is 2,907 on the dot. Now, of course, if we manage to get a sweet spot, the raw damage increases by a further 3%. This extra 3% brings us to a total damage of 2,993. 
So yes, assuming I am not missing anything else this time around, this is the highest damage number you can hit against the training pool for the moment. Now before we finish up, there are two things I want to make crystal clear. First up, this does not make the Rajang GS better than the Acidic Lavenous GS for general play. Outside of the fact that these sets aren't realistic to run, the Rajang GS only beats the Acidic Glavness by 14 damage and this training pool has a 30 hit zone value to Thunder. The only monsters in the game with a 30 or higher hit zone value to Thunder are... Called to Roth, Xeno Jiva, Gold Rathian, Puke Puke, Naga Kuga, and Dodo Gamma. Once your hits and values start dropping lower, this gets weaker and weaker compared to the Acidic Lavenous GS. So even if you manage to hit the raw cap and get Thunder Attack 6 on the Rajang GS, you'd still be dealing less damage than a similar setup on the Acidic Glavenous GS against most monsters in the game. And please do not take this as a recommendation to use the Rajang GS against those monsters, because the Acidic Glavenous GS still beats those with normal sets that you run normally against those particular monsters. The Acidic Glavness only wins by a few percents of damage, so feel free to use whatever you want to, but this is not a recommendation to use the Rajang GS if you want more damage. And finally, do not take this as a recommendation to use Frostcraft over regular raw GS sets. Crit Draw Frostcraft GS Play is much comfier than standard TCS Play and has a much lower skill floor. But if you want to be dealing maximum damage with your TCSs in standard hunting scenarios, you want to be running Raw GS. See, with Evasion Mantle and Feline Heroics mixed in, we don't have to skill in any raw damage skills. But unless you're planning on running Feline Heroics for your standard Greatsword runs, you'll need to stack damage skills to even get close to the cap. And Frostcraft sets cannot fit in that many damage skills, especially compared to a standard Acidic Glavenous Master's Touch damage set. So yes, you can hit a potentially higher damage number with a Frostcraft set because we don't have the skill and raw skills. But if you want to maximize the damage of your true charge slashes in normal hunt scenarios, just run regular raw GS. I apologize for these ending qualifiers, I just don't want anyone to misinterpret this experiment in highest damage possible as a recommendation to run Frostcraft for True Charge Slash play. Alright, that is everything we have for you on this one. Thank you so much for checking out the video as always. If you have any friends who would be interested in checking out this video, be sure to share the video with them. It's one of the best ways to help support us completely for free. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it as well as let us know in a comment below. And thank you as always to Honey over at HoneyHunterWorld.com for creating and maintaining the tools we used to make our sets with. And a huge thank you to our old friend Tony who did record the footage for this video as I do not personally have the materials to make a Rajang GS with two attack augments. And if you'd like to come hang out and chat, be sure to check out our Discord server, the Mathlos Nest. Just please keep any Iceborne talk to our Iceborne specific channels so our PC players can avoid spoilers. Don't forget we do have a Twitter where we post updates about videos and just general things that interest us and Tuna does stream live on Twitch almost every single day. And of course a huge huge thank you to our patrons. And an especially huge thank you to our new patrons Keaton Goforth, Laydell Wilson, and Zeph the Mountain Goat. It really does mean a lot that you're willing to support us directly, especially when I'm going through a particularly rough time like I am right now. Regardless, thank you so much for your support, it really does mean the world. Alright, we do have plenty more Iceborne content out on the way for you guys, so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to see those as soon as they come out. Happy hunting hunters, we'll see you on the next one. Bye!